Start recording. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on Twitch. No engines, no libraries, just us and our cross-compiling kettlebell lifting selves. It is time right now uh, for us to get back to our lighting computations. We have a bunch of work to do today, so I'm going to get right into it. If you are trying to follow along at home, please keep in mind today is Magic Day 100. That makes things complicated because at day 100, I am bifurcating the two zip files. Basically, every 100 days, I make a new zip file uh, so that uh, the zip doesn't grow out of control. So basically, if you're trying to find day 99, remember it's in the 0 to 99 zip, not in the 100 to 199 zip. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit uh, weird there. So you got to go unzip day 99 out of that, out of the old source zip. Uh, if you want to follow along today, everyone from now on will be in the uh, in the hundred to hundred ninety nine until we get through the next hundred days. But uh, assuming that you've got all that under control, let's go ahead and get things started. Now, where we were, uh, where we left off yesterday, is we had sort of started to get our reflection stuff working, and as you can see, we actually did what we were trying to do, which is get our uh, reflection, our environment map showing up uh, based on the normals. But what we had not done yet and what I didn't want to start doing because we, you know, we're, we had kind of gotten to a stopping point and we only had five minutes left in the stream. What I did not get a chance to do was actually imp implement any kind of code that tries to compute a reflection vector. And as a result, the reflection intersection code not running, uh, since that doesn't run, it means that we just get a flat version of this in here because we're not actually doing anything other than just verifying that we can look up into it. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of go over how that reflection code works with you and then uh, go ahead and try to implement that um, if we can uh, for the rest of the stream. So that's all we're really doing today and that's the majority of what we have left to do for our actual normal mapping code before we optimize it. There's really not a whole lot else to do. Uh, mostly the rest of the stuff in lighting has to do with how we actually compute uh, the environment maps that we're sampling into. So let's go over to the blackboard for a second and just kind of uh, go over quickly uh, here on day 100 what we're trying to do, okay, so that you can understand the math that we're trying to simulate in here. Um, part of it is very straightforward and part of it's a little less straightforward just because of sort of like I said there's a little bit of hackiness that has to go on with 2D lighting so we can't just implement things directly but for the first part uh, is very direct and, and, and quite simple. So if you remember, I drew a bunch of diagrams when we were talking about lighting and they all looked like this, right? They all had some surface, right? And they had an eye that was looking at them. Actually, I think I typically drew it this way where there, here was the eyeball, right? There's our little eyeball. I don't know where the eyelashes go. Maybe they go there, I guess, right? Uh, there's our eyeball. And we also have our light source, right? And what I was saying was that, well, what happens is, you know, the light source and the eye, they sort of form this, this, kind, of, uh, this, this kind of bounce here, right? Um, and what I, was, what I was saying is that most surfaces, right, if they're highly reflective, a highly reflective surface, what you're going to see when you look at it, the light most strongly reflects out in the direction that it would if it was literally like a ball that was bouncing off of it, right? It's a pure reflection. So like this angle and this angle are the same angle, okay? Uh, and then what happens as you get into uh, surfaces that are less and less diffuse is actually you start seeing much more light. So you, you start seeing light that's, that's at much further off that angle, right? Like, so it starts to be collecting more of like a cone of light out here. And the backscatter still does tend to be less. So, you know, as you get glossier and glossier, you're talking about sort of widening that cone. And so that's not um, by any means a, a physically based lighting model. It's just an approximation to one. A physically based lighting model, again, actually takes uh, some kind of uh, functions that are actual approximations to the real lighting bound transfer of the surface, like we talked about in the lighting um, show. But for most surfaces, uh, we can sort of approximate them in some way that's good enough for our 2D approximation by just sort of having that, uh, that sort of uh, simple trade-off, right? By just saying, okay, we're just gonna say we either take just that direct reflection if we want, or we start taking wider and wider versions. And we talked about how we might do those wider versions by sampling out of texture maps that have been blurred, right? Lighting, lighting environment maps that have been blurred. 
So for all of the lighting that we want to do, we're basically just going to concentrate on this very simple setup that we have here, which is the straight reflection model, right? Sort of this concept that wherever I'm looking, I want to see lights that are directly, you know, that, that sort of directly come out uh, from there, right? Uh, so I want to be able to compute this. Now, this is exactly like what we did with collision detection, right? So if you, if you remember when we did collision detection, it's exactly the same kind of equation where we want to uh, take a surface which has a normal, which is here, right? We want to take a surface as a normal and we want to take a vector such as this vector to the eye and we want to produce a vector that's very similar to that vector only it goes like in the exact opposite direction or something, right? So basically, you know, it's got like the same y component relative to the surface, right? But its x component is negated right, again, relative to the surface. If this was the x and y axis, this would be trivial, you'd just negate the x and you'd be done, but of course it isn't, and so we have to do a little bit more work to figure out what it actually is, but it's the exact same math as collision detection, so if you remember from that, it should be very straightforward. Let's go ahead and do it. Supposing we have a vector from the point we're computing out to the i, here is the i, right, so whatever that vector is, let's say that's our i vector, that's e, right? I apologies to Euler, who likes to reserve that for his number. So suppose we have a vector e that goes out to the i, right? And we want to compute this vector over here, which I gotta know, we'll call it our sun vector, for, or our sampling vector, uh, s. <laughs> so off it goes out to there, right? So we want to compute s from e, right? And what we know is we basically know that all we really need to do Excuse me. All we really need to do here is we need to be able uh, to sort of produce this, this uh, ne negated version of the vector. Now remember, this is sort of technically in full 3D if we want to conceptualize it that way, right? So really, when we're looking at it like this, right, we're really looking at some arbitrary vector here that's, that's like that, uh, and we want to produce the, the, the arbitrary one here. And, and it may have you know, coordinates on both uh, x, y, and z, right? We're not, so we're not restricting ourselves to the bounce in the plane, but the bounce itself kind of always does happen in a plane, right? You can always pick a plane uh, that contains like these three points, right? So it's, it's a bounce that's happening in a plane, but we don't really know what the plane is, okay? Uh, so this is not necessarily the x, the y, and the z, right? This is just the normal, and we don't really have any coordinates uh, for the plane that we're bouncing off, because it can be any plane anywhere in the world. So all we have is the normal uh, and the point, right? And we then have the, that i vector and we want to produce our s vector. So what we can do is if we just, again, negate that e vector, right? If we negate that e vector, and this is how we did it with the collision detection, right? If we, if we have a vector that essentially points exactly the same direction as s, everything we want about s uh, is true, only instead of going back out, instead of bouncing out of the plane, it's penetrating into the plane, going into the plane then all we have to do is figure out how to you know, pick that back up again. And this is that, that normal dot product uh, thing that we use for collision detection. It's the exact same thing that we do there, right? Because what we end up with is we end up with, if we, if we come back to our 2D slice, right? If we take that i and we just look at what the negation uh, is to the i, right? So we have, this is negative e down here, right? We can see that all we really need to do is figure out what this vector is right, what's that vector right there, and add two of it in. Because if we add two of that vector in, it will first bring us up to the plane where we bounced off of, and then it will bring us up to the point that we actually want for our sampling vector, right? And what is this vector, right? Well, we know the length of this vector, right? It's just, the, it's just whatever um, e was, right? In fact, we don't even have to, to think about negative e. We know how long this vector is because that's just however long e was dotted to n, right? So if we have E transpose N, if we have that, that tells us how long this is, right? And we just want to add two of those uh, along the N direction, right? So we just want two of those along the N direction. That's all we really need to do to take our negative E, right? Uh, and produce that, that result, right? So, so if we have negative E plus uh, this vector, that will produce um, 
that, that bounce that we want, right? And again, this is a purely geometric, I didn't do this in an algebraic way, this is a purely geometric construction. I just looked at the diagram and decided what I wanted to do and produced the equation for it. Um, there's probably other ways you could think about doing this where you, uh, you could sort of do this in a more algebraic way, right? You could imagine saying something like, I want the result to be the same dot product on N as the original, but I want it to have the dot product with itself be, I'm trying to think of how I would say that, the dot product with itself would be negative one or negative the length, you know, I. I don't want to actually try to do it now because this is one of the things I'd have to kind of sit there and scratch my head for a while to figure out exactly the right way to phrase it mathematically to solve. Um, but you could do that, right? You could come up with some, if you're an algebra centric person, you should be able to look at this diagram and come up with some rules that you want uh, this result to obey and then solve for it. I tend to use geometry most of the time because it's faster for my brain. I don't have to sit there scratching my head for a little while, but some people work better with algebra. And so I don't really want to discourage that on the screen stream. I just, I can't be, I can't lead by example there. Cause as soon as I have to downshift to algebraic solving, I go much slower. So anyway, this is roughly what we want to do. The question is just, uh, how do we actually set ourselves up uh, to do this? And so let's go look at the code. Um, where is my, I didn't open Emacs yet. I did not open Emacs yet, it would appear. Uh, so I guess, uh, yeah, I guess we just don't have an Emacs window open. So let's open an Emacs window so we can go over there uh, to our code. Here we go. And when we have our, our draw rectangle slowly code, you remember where we had this stuff happen. Uh, and we have a little to do here, which is like actually compute a bounce based on the viewer direction. So there's our, there's our, um, oh man, I'm out of tea already. And we're only like 15 minutes into the programming. That's no good. That's no good at all. Anyway, <clears throat> so if I wanna uh, to replace this to do here, what I need to do is, is put that stuff in that I just talked about. What we're gonna need um, as per our diagram is we're gonna need the I vector uh, that goes and we're gonna need the normal. Now the normal we have, right? Because we have our normal map, which is all we really need but we don't have that I vector. So we need to figure out a way uh, to figure out what, you know, where our I is kind of looking. And this is actually particularly tricky for 2D games because we don't actually have a rigorous definition for it. Now, uh, I know this sounds a little bit strange, but if you think about it, the problem with 2D games is they don't typically end up being actually perspective. So, you know, if you were to think about what would happen um, I guess I didn't quite finish what I needed to draw to tell you everything. Uh, if you think about the screen as being like kind of this monitor sitting in front of you, right? And you think about you being back here uh, looking at it, right? If we want to talk about sort of that midline, so here's the, here's the center point, right? And we talk about this midline. Um, you know, any point that I'm looking at on the screen, we do know a vector that would be sort of a perspective vector that would be how I'm looking uh, at this point in space, right? But the thing that's kind of confusing is that our game isn't in perspective, right? Our game does, has like an orthographic uh, feel to it, the way we were drawing things, where, you know, a tree looks the same on either side of the screen. So a tree that's here looks the same as a tree that's over here, which is not how perspective works. How perspective works is you would see more of this side of the tree over here, and you would see more of this side of the tree over here. You can verify this to yourself really easily just by looking at your own monitor. You can see the inside of the bezel on the left-hand side of the, of the thing, right? Um, and the inside of the bezel on the right-hand side as well, even those, those are two opposite sides of that bezel shape, right? Um, you know, your, your sort of, your ability to perceive things is, is kind of warped in that way by the perspective. So you're not seeing the same sides of objects. You're seeing different sides of them depending on where they are, right? And you know, another simple example would be hold up something in front of you. And on here, if I'm, if I'm holding it on this side, I can see this, this part of it, right? And if I move it to this side, that part is now occluded and I can see this part, right? But that's not what we see when we do most 2D games, especially kinds with hand-drawn art, right? Um, what we see is just that sprite is, doesn't warp as it moves across. And it's kind of like this orthographic style projection uh, that we use. So in order to figure out what our I vector is, it suggests, at least to me, 
that if we were going to stay orthographic, then what we actually want to do is pretend always that the, that the vector to the i is pointing straight out of the screen, right? And so what that means is, as if you were to move, uh, the, if you were to scroll the screen left and right, you wouldn't see reflections on objects change. But if the object themselves moved left to right, you would see reflections on the change. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, and I think I want to do that because that keeps our visual uh, grammar consistent. It doesn't mix two different things together. And I think that might be better for the overall look of the game because it feels a little weird to use perspective reflections when the art is not itself perspective. That just seems like a bad idea. So what that means is we're gonna go ahead and make the, the Z axis, right? Which is pointing straight on up out of the screen. That is our I, right? And so what that means is our Z, you know, our, our I vector, right? Is essentially just pointing straight up. It's pointing straight up back at us. Uh, now that confers on us some optimization potential as well, because if you think about that, um, if we're going to do operations with that and we know that it's only got the Z involved, uh, that allows us to do some things that are much more straightforward, right? Um, so we might want to think about doing that just, you know, uh, a little quote-unquote premature optimizations here. We could totally do that if we wanted to, because if you think about what happens here, this equation, right, negative e plus 2e transpose n, n, well, e transpose anything is just going to be the z-coordinate of that thing, right? I mean, that's just a given, because if I take the dot product, right, do you remember what the dot product is? Right, so ex, ey, ez, right, dotted with nx, ny, nz, right, equals ex, nx plus ey, ny plus ez, nz, right? That's what happens, right? So if I'm pre saying that these two are always going to be zero because it's pointing straight out, the what the i vector is, right? If those two are both zero, then I know, and, and this is one then I already know what this is before I actually have to do any work to actually compute it, right? I know that the x goes away, I know that the y goes away, and I know that the ez is actually 1, right? So the only thing we actually need is the nz, right? So this equation is actually just negative e plus 2 nz times n, right? And furthermore, what that means is the negative e uh, we also know that that's just subtracting one from the z. So it's really just 2nzn, right, like this. It's that vector, whatever that vector is, uh, having one subtracted from its z, right, minus this. <coughs> that's it. That would be the entirety of computing this. Now, if you notice, there's something pretty darn interesting there, which is that if we want to standardize on this completely, what that means is if we wanted to, we could actually get rid of all this math and just pre-store this uh, directly in our normal map, right? Because since we know what all of this is, we actually could just go ahead and make our normal map store to nzn, right? Instead of storing uh, an actual normal, right? Uh, so we have options there, and it depends on what ends up being true, because there's reasons why we might not want to do that. There's uh, because we can't use the square, the, the square root trick to, to uh, store only two components, potentially, at that point. You know, there's, there's other reasons why we might not want to do it, but it's just worth noting um, that that's very simple. And so if we take a look at what actually happens here, I'm going to go ahead and say here, uh, I, uh, the, the I vector is always assumed uh, to be, uh, you know, 0, 0, uh, 1, pointing straight up out of the screen, right? And so in order to compute that bounce, what we need to figure out uh, is we need to figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what our negative e 2nzn is. So 2nzn is pretty easy. We have the normal, right, uh, right there. And so it's just going to be the normal z uh, 2 times the normal z times normal xyz, that's that term, right, that we're adding in. Uh, and then the vector that we're starting with, again, is it's just going to be 0, 0, uh, 1, so we're just going to subtract 1 from that z component. Uh, so this is our, uh, you know, our, our bounce direction, like, like so. Our bounce direction z is going to be subtracting 
uh, negative one from that. <coughs> I'll even put in here, this is just the simplified version of negative e plus two, oops, negative e plus two e transpose n, n, right? Of the reflection. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And that looks about right. So that computes that uh, that other normal that we're using there, right? Um, and so, trying to think if there's anything else uh, that has to happen there. I don't, uh, I don't know if there is. Um, I think that's about it. So anyway, we'll take a look at that a little more closely later when we step into this. Uh, but after that, once we have that bounce direction, uh, that bounce direction, um, I believe, uh, just needs to get passed in here. So, so we got a couple things we need to do there. Uh, first of all, we need to say uh, that this is actually a bounce direction, right? And uh, I think that's, we're not sampling from that at all yet. So that's, that's really all we have to do is pass it in here. And then we have to go ahead and do the second part of our math. So this is actually the, this is the sample direction, right? Uh, and the screen space UV tells us where we were. So now we have to do the second part, which is this intersection math. Um, we can quickly compile this and see what happens. Uh, although uh, this, this probably now will allow illegal results. So we may get an as assertion in there if we actually uh, do that. Um, but you know, why not? We'll just run it anyway. Um, worst that happens is it asserts. Uh, let's see here, dot Z, there we go. Um, so there it is, uh, it actually did not assert, it works okay. Uh, and so you can kind of see that it's, you know, it's starting to get some of that reflectivity in there, but again, we haven't actually done the part that actually does the sampling properly, so we're not quite there yet. Uh, so we're, but you can sort of see it starting to round out a little bit, which is nice, that probably suggests we didn't uh, mess up our math too terribly much, uh, but now we have to do the second part. So let's talk about the second part. <clears throat> And the second part is a little nasty because it involves a fudge factor, as people are, are commonly uh, fun, fond of saying, right? A fudge factor. Uh, the, the thing that's problematic about fudge factors uh, is that they sound good, right? Uh, they sound good because uh, at least if you're not using the scatological determinant of fudge and you're actually talking about the stuff that they sell in tourist towns, for some reason they sell in all tourist towns, um, because fudge is tasty, um, but it's actually bad. So that you actually probably want to think about the scatological fudge when you think about fudge factor, uh, not the like tourist fudge. Uh, so think, um, think scat fudge, not tourist fudge, right? Um, because fudge factors tend to be bad, and the reason that they tend to be bad is because you have no idea what they should be set to, and you don't really know much about their behavior a lot of times, right? When you're simulating something using real world stuff, using real world physics, using real world values, you kind of know what they should be. And so you can put in things that you know what they should be. And if it doesn't work, you know you have a bug. But when you have a fudge factor in there, you don't know. Maybe you just set the fudge factor wrong, right? And so it makes debugging a lot harder uh, when you've got these sort of arbitrary constants in there. That said, do they happen? Yes. Do you have to be comfortable with them? Yes. Uh, even the most advanced physics papers oftentimes will have constants pulled out of thin air in there. I, I am not making this up. Uh, you can go, I was reading one the other day, in fact, about um, vorticity confinement in, in fluid dynamics. And sure, as the day is long, there are constants that they just flat out pulled out of nowhere. And this is in like helicopter uh, vortex simulation literature, right? And it's like, they're just like full on like, I don't know, here's a, here's a value uh, that we made up, uh, it seems to work. And you're just like, all right, great. So yeah, don't feel bad about using them because even the most hardcore math stuff still tends to use them, unfortunately, uh, but do be aware that they do have these pitfalls. So you, you do try to wanna limit the amount of fudge factoring you have in your code uh, if you can. So the, where's the fudge factor? Well, here's the problem. We've got a screen uh, and we've got a point on the screen. And so if you think about what's happening now, we're, we're thinking about that screen as being sort of this flat uh, plane in the world. And then we've got some map up in the world or perhaps below in the world, depending on the circumstance. And what we wanna do 
is we want to sample into that map, okay? So we've got a direction and we want to know uh, from this point, if we walk in this direction along the, the direction it's pointing, where on the upper map we will hit, okay? Now this is a straightforward math thing to do and we will do it in a second, but in fact, we've already done it in collision detection. Collision detection keeps coming up, right? But you remember this, we've done this uh, ray, when does a ray intersect a plane? We've done this before. But the problem that we have here is we don't know how far this is, right? We have no idea how far this is um, because it's just kind of made up lighting stuff. Uh, so, you know, we can try just setting it to how far above the ground we want the sky to appear to be. I don't really know. But at some level, we probably don't want that because then when we get to the edge of the map, it would be a problem. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of fudging in here. Look, we don't even really know how big we want this thing to be, right? We might want this thing to be larger than the world so that stuff that samples near the edge we'll still be able to hit it okay. So there's just, it's, it's nasty. So we've got some problems here, but let's just assume, uh, let's assume that we will handle those fudge factors somehow. So what we really just need to know is given some definition of these things, how can we compute this? Well, let's start off with the most simple observation that we have here, which is that if we assume we know how far we are traveling, so we assume we know our z distance, right? We'll call this this one z and this one d, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If we assume we know our z distance, then really all we need to do is figure out something that'll tell us how far we would be displaced, um, right, in the normal x and y. Because we've really got, if you think about this normal, right, this normal has a few different components. It's got two components in the plane right? In fact, you could think of it mapping down like this. Uh, it's got two components in the plane, the X and the Y in terms of this plane, right? And then it's got this other one that's the Z, right? That's its Z axis component. So what we can think about is just in terms of its X and Y, right? How far would they, how far would it displace it, us from this point if we, you know, traveled as far as it takes us in Z along this thing uh, to get here, right? And that's a pretty easy thing to do because even without thinking about it much, you can see we've already kind of constructed some similar triangles here, right? We have some length of this thing that is pointing up towards the thing we want to go to. And we're saying we have some fudge factor which says how far away it is, right? We'll call that F for fudge, right? F is for fudge, right? We have some, some F that says what it is. All we need to know is how many of those, how many of those Z components would it take to get there, right? So if we call that Z, it's just F over Z, right? It's all we're doing. We're just saying how many of those would it take to get up here? That is the co coefficient that we would need uh, to figure out how far we would travel along the X and Y of that normal map, right? Now, of course, it's a little confusing because uh, we have to first think about whether we're looking down or whether we're looking up because we had ones down here as well. So we need to take all of that into account, but this is the only quantity that we actually need to produce. Once we produce that, we just multiply that by the components of the normal that are in the plane, and that gets us where we would be sampling, uh, where, what the displacement is from our location uh, where we would be sampling, right? Uh, so, yeah. Assuming screen aligned stuff, uh, which there's actually going to probably be a problem with, and so we'll have to introduce some things to deal with it, but assuming screen aligned stuff for now, uh, the reason I say screen, assuming screen aligned stuff is just, like I said, we may want this to be larger, and so then the coordinates for looking up into this will not be coincident with the coordinates for looking up at this. There'll be a subset, so there'd really be another fudge factor, right? There's this fudge factor, and then there's like there's a fudge uh, Z and a fudge X or something like that, right? Which says how big this thing is. And you really only need to store one of them. You, just, you don't have to store their, their multipli their, them multiplied together or whatever, right? Uh, so it doesn't, comp uh, it doesn't affect our performance at all uh, that that would happen, but it does add yet more of that sort of fudginess uh, that we have to, um, be wary of. So that's why I say this part's not going to be so clean and easy. 
Uh, it's a little bit nastier, uh, but we'll do the best that we can given the circumstances. So we pass that bounce direction in here. And when we pass that bounce direction, what I'd like to do is I'd like to set us up uh, for success by assuming that the bounce direction always is going in the direction of the map that it's trying to sample from, right? And we know that all of our normals are pointing up at us. And so what I'd like to do uh, is say, all right, we've got this bounce direction. And so now what we're gonna do is, since we're not using the normal anymore, uh, right, it's our bounce direction uh, that's going to take into account uh, whatever it is that we're actually uh, looking at here. And I, I'm trying to remember, so, oh right, it's the Y, it's the Y that tells us whether we're, we're going down or whether we're going up, which, which one of those two that we're, we're, uh, we're sampling towards, right? Uh, and it's going to be our, our Z axis that ends up being the Y, it seems like. Uh, so I wonder if we should just pre-store our normals a little more sensibly here. Uh, that's that's kind of, well, I, I don't know. We can't really because at some level we sort of have to, uh, yeah, yeah, all right. Let's think this through a little bit because we have another problem here, which is that assuming that the normals are actually all in this space, are they correctly in this space? Uh, then this all works too as well. I just want to make sure this is working correctly. So if this is pointing out at me, we did treat that as our Z. Z001 uh, in normal space is pointing back at us. Uh, so I guess it should be fine. All right, I guess it should be fine. So our TM map is actually going to be based on that bounce direction, right? Not the normal because we're trying to use whatever direction we're sampling in now. We're, we're getting rid of that normal. Um, I suppose that's something we should have tried here as well. Uh, you can see that's still, you know, it's, it's getting closer, but still not quite there yet. So when we do that sampling, um, we're going to use that Y. And then what we need to do is say, all right, if we're sampling from the bottom map, right, uh, then our normal is pointing down. Uh, in other words, it's, it's, it's got a Y uh, that is, is negative, right? Whereas here, it's got a Y uh, that is positive, okay? And given those two things, uh, we don't want to have to deal with, our, we don't want our bounce direction uh, to have to account for that. I'm trying to think of how to explain this. We want the sample environment map function to not have to care whether the normal was pointing negative y or positive y. We want it to assume that y was always positive because this code right here has already handled whatever needed to happen in terms of picking a different map for which one it is. So we want them all to look the same as if you're just looking up at the sky, even though sometimes you're looking down at the ground. So all we wanna do is say, oh, okay, if you were looking at that map, Let's go ahead and make the bounce direction y. Let's make that equal to the negative so that we're always talking about an upwards pointing sample. Does that make sense? Uh, and so here we go with that. Again, nothing particularly odd there, although again, we've got uh, plenty of issues uh, to deal with. But so we've got our bounce direction y and now that's negative. That doesn't affect the magnitude of the bounce direction at all, right? It just changes uh, which way it's pointing. And so then we can go over to sample environment map and start to actually figure out what we wanna do here. Uh, so again, we've got that sample direction. We're saying that our Y is the thing that determines how far along we go. That's just because of the way we've encoded these maps. Uh, so we want to uh, take uh, that Y, that sample direction Y, and we want to assume that Y can't be zero. Uh, and the reason that we know Y can't be zero is because we've already sort of nullified that out in here, right? Um, we've said already that Y can't point to the side because if it points to the side, it's gonna have to go, it would, only, only this guy goes to the side and we're gonna have to do some, some things uh, with this to be sure. Uh, this is, in fact, I can delete this because this is more of a to-do. Um, how do we sample from the middle map? Uh, and I don't know. So anyway, we've, we've got that, uh, that Y, we can assert essentially that it's not, no, that it's not zero, we can, we can assert that y is greater than zero, right? Uh, and we should never hit that case, and we don't, right? So that's good. And then what we need to do is we need to compute uh, that quotient, that sort of coefficient. Um, so our coefficient is first we have our fudge factor. Here's our fudge factor f, like we said. Uh, I don't know how far away that should actually be. You know, let's say that it's, that it's I don't know, a meter away for, for now, not probably a particularly good value, but let's say it's a meter away. We have our uh, coefficient that we need to compute, which is that sample direction y. We're gonna take the fudge factor and divide it by the sample y. 
and that will produce our offset for us, right? And our offset is going to be uh, <clears throat> that coefficient uh, times the vector that is the other components of this. Now again, the x for our normal goes in the x direction, and we were saying that the uh, sort of the z for our normals uh, goes in the z direction, if you will, right? Uh, goes in the in the y direction, if you will, right? Uh, again, total hackage, but that's just how we encoded them so that as things kind of twist properly, we will, you know, we'll sort of pick up a, a, a sort of circular region around the ground. Um, and I guess the sample direction uh, z, when we go through our coordinate stuff, I'm going to put it to do in here, uh, make sure we know what direction z should go in y, because we may want, we may, that may need to be inverted as well, depending on how we choose to encode these maps. But since we haven't gone through and done our coordinate system pass, uh, that's going to be a bit of an issue. So once we have that offset, that's going to give us the offset in meters, right, um, from wh whatever that point is uh, that, we, that we're at. And so that's when we then say, okay, from the location, from our screen space UV, right? Our screen space UV, are these TXs, do we actually do bilinear sample lot XY? Are these TXTY? These are in pixels. So we actually have to do a little more work here, right? We need to first compute our P and then multiply it out to the size of the map that we're actually sampling. Uh, so it's going to be something, you know, along the lines of, uh, of uh, where is that code? It's gonna be something along the lines of this code right here, right? Where we're actually computing uh, the U, I'm sorry, not that code, this, this code right here, uh, where we're, we're computing out how far we go uh, in U and V, right? Uh, in fact, this is, I guess, exactly what we would want to do, right? Uh, this is the code that we actually need here. So what we need to do is we need to take our LOD. Uh, we need to, to map that out like so. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about how we compute this U and V in a second from the offset, but I just want to get this in here. So we take that TX and TY. Uh, we want to blow that out to the size of the texture. And we want to clamp it because, again, we could be sampling outside. So TX is going to be equal to clamp 0, 1 TX. Uh, and so is... Uh, so is ty, right? And that'll just prevent us from sampling outside uh, the texture map. So really all we need to do now is, is figure out what that uv is. Uh, so this will actually be our uv coordinate. Uh, so if you'll just do it this way, uv x, uv y. Uh, and that's gonna be our offset. Excuse me. That's gonna be our offset uh, plus wherever we were in screen space, in the screen space uv, right? But the offset, Again, this, uh, in fact, we can just do it exactly the way we did it here, but our C essentially has to have some scaling value because remember, this is in meters. And so we need to convert our meters uh, to UVs. And so there's something here that's like, you know, uh, meters to UV, right? Um, or UVs uh, per meter kind of a thing, right? And UVs per meter, whatever that is, that actually needs to get multiplied in here as well, right? Um, so that you can uh, convert between those two spaces. Uh, so if we do that, uh, whoa, that's not good. Uh, if we do that, we're not quite, um, we're not getting anything. Uh, hold on a second. So I, I think our UVs per meter is, is probably much too high there, right? That it should probably be something more like, like that. Uh, but we'll have to step through this to figure out uh, what we're doing wrong here because I expect we're doing uh, other things wrong than just that. Um, I have to think about how many UVs per meter are there. I guess it's, it's something like a, because if that map was the whole screen, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Uh, but anyway, so this is actually, instead of our fudge factor, I should probably call this what it actually is, which is distance to map, uh, or like uh, height of map off uh, screen or whatever, something like that. Height of map, um, uh, Distance from map in Z, let's just call it that. Distance from map in Z. Uh, all right, and so I think we've got everything in here. We just have to debug it. Um, we are producing, uh, oh, that's, that's probably most of the problem there as well. Uh, we need to actually clamp these guys uh, because I, 
actually wanted to clamp the UVs, not uh, the results. That would explain uh, why that was happening. Uh, all right. And uh, that's getting pretty close, right? You can see that we're now sort of getting roughly some reflection stuff in there. Uh, I, I think it's a little premature to declare uh, victory, but you can sort of see uh, where we're going with this, right? Uh, we're, we're starting to get to the point uh, where you can see a, an actual reflection in there. I also, uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce a little bit of motion in there too, so we can kind of just see where we're at uh, at the moment. Let's go ahead and, uh, and come in here to our, uh, <clears throat> uh, to our uh, call that actually calls coordinate system. So we've got our disp in here. I'm going to add disp back in. Uh, and we were computing disp somewhere. I don't know where disp was actually getting computed. I guess we actually aren't, or no, we are. There we go. Um, so you can kind of see we're starting to get where we want to be, but we're not quite there yet, right? Um, you know, you can you can see that you're kind of getting a little bit of a rolling reflection here. Uh, this guy looks like he's reflecting kind of backwards, so I think we've got uh, some bugs. Uh, on on the sort of downside on the on the underneath side maybe the way I negated that Y was not actually legal I'll have to think about whether that's correct or not um, but we're getting you know a little bit closer here right uh, and again this is very expensive I can also uh, for now turn off our maps we we are completely unoptimized at the moment which is a problem I guess I could also do uh, for purposes of this I could also uh, give us that nice uh, compiler boost here uh, let's see Minus O D, O two. <clears throat> God, you gotta love optimizing uh, the optimizing compiler, huh? Or uh, maybe we should just say, man, it's it's kind of crazy how bad the debug build uh, is. But yeah, um, so you can kind of see that light uh, now that it's it's animating a little more quickly. You can kind of see how that light is playing off there. Uh, but again, I think that that bottom reflection should be curving this way, and it's not. So we've got uh, definitely a bug in how we were treating that uh, that flip. So let's take a look uh, at that. We also have, uh, you can see, we're sampling uh, sort of right at that edge where the normals, um, I, I think that's prob that. To be honest, that might just be because we made the normals at the edge point straight back. I don't know if you remember that. Um, so that may actually have more to do with it. That may not actually be a bug of ours. That may be just because we don't we need to fix the normal so that we don't have uh, when this where the sphere is not uh, actually there. We're not we're not doing the wrong thing. Um, so yeah, uh, I feel like that that seems reasonable. Now I'm wondering too. I feel like. One question I have is, is, aren't these supposed to be pointing directly back? Shouldn't we see some checkerboard though in the area here? I wonder, I wonder why we're not, because we're not, that, that, seems, that seems a little broken. I feel like we've got, I feel like we've got a bug there potentially. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that and I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to say about that. I think I think something's a little wonky. Because if it just was all zero zero one, it was all pointing directly back uh, towards us. Uh, oh no! Right, because directly towards us is not up towards the sky. Right, 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 right. So if you think about it, I, I, I'm I'm. This is my first time ever doing lighting like this, by the way. So it's it's all stuff that I have to think about for the first time. Right, so the way that we're encoding things, right, pointing up and pointing down, actually Z straight back at you is in that special sampling plane because it's not pointing towards the sky, right? Um, it's pointing in that, in that other plane. So really what we should have done if we wanted straight up pointing vectors is we should have made those, point, uh, those straight up pointing vectors uh, instead of being 0, 0, 1, uh, they actually should have been zero one zero, um, right? So so back here, um, if we were to go into the thing that actually makes uh, that normal map, there we go. I can't actually see my mini buffer. If we were to go into the thing that that makes the sphere, uh, what was that normal map sphere make sphere normal map make sphere normal map? There we go. Uh, so in make sphere normal map. 
what we had is we were sort of doing something, I believe, where we would just, yeah, this would be our default normal. Um, I think that is actually probably what we want as our default normal, which would point straight up at the sky. Uh, that would make a little bit more sense uh, in terms of, of being able to look at what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, uh, and try that and then restart so it'll regenerate our texture maps um, and see if that does anything. Well, I still, it's not, so it's still not showing me what I think it should show me. I feel like it should show me a, um, it should show me the checkerboard here, still getting reflected a little bit, right? Because um, this is basically like a mirror, right, with a bump in it. And so I kind of want to go see why we are having that, uh, that, that problem. Are we actually using alpha from a sphere somehow? Like what is actually, how, how are we, and, and for that matter, why are we getting sort of uh, spherical shading on, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm, I'm a little confused. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know why. So I'm gonna go ahead and usually, if, if you don't know why, uh, that's probably a good indication that you should be stepping into the debugger um, because, well, you've got something to learn. And so let's go ahead and learn something, we hope. Um, let's go into that, uh, that render call. It looks like we don't have it up here. Uh, so draw a rectangle slowly. Let's go ahead and run there. Uh, and I just wanna see, I wanna understand a little bit about what's going on here. So when we come in here and we sample this normal map, um, what I just wanna see what's going on. Uh, so, so let's see what our first normal is. <clears throat> And so that normal is basically pointing uh, right up at, uh, at the sky like we thought. Um, so I feel like this should be the first pixel too, right? Like that should be what it is. Uh, so let's take a look at what we compute for our bounce direction, right? Let's see what our bounce direction is. Uh, and so our bounce direction here um, is going to be, uh, hmm, okay. Okay, I didn't, this is very fascinating. So it's actually, that's actually understandable too. So if it was pointing perfectly up, we would be looking exactly oblique to it, which means that our reflection to it, we would not, it would really not reflect at all. It'd be like holding a mirror sideways and looking at it, right? So if we want to reflect upwards, we still need some degree of tilt uh, to the mirror. Right, and so yeah, I guess I guess now that I think about it, that actually makes some sense. We should still step through some of this because I have other stuff that I want to look at, but that actually makes perfect sense now that I think about it. It was really just me being kind of blunt. Uh, so what we actually want to do, yeah, is we'd actually want to say, okay, you know, let that normal term uh, be something that's that's maybe half y, half z, or something like that, right? That's sort of angled upwards, so something like this, uh, but it needs to be normalized, obviously. Uh, and so uh, what I wanna do is say, uh, I don't know, can I do squirt in here? Can I do the square root? I wanna do the square root of, of one plus one. Will it let me do that, right? Okay, and then can I do, can I do one over the square root of one plus one? Uh, mm. One over square root of one plus one. There it is. So I just want uh, the normalized version of that. Uh, I guess I don't know what, does that come out in here? Yeah, there it is. I just want that value, right? Um, so there's my normalized normal that's pointing sort of half Y, half Z. Uh, let me see if that gives us more of what I was expecting. Yeah, that's, that's more of what I was expecting, right? Um, and so if I go ahead and make, uh, make us go at O2 here, um, that, that is the sphere, right? That is the reflective sphere. Um, so yeah, I'm not certain that our reflection code is quite working correctly yet, but we're getting close, right? Uh, we're getting closer to a working reflection. Uh, and so that's a good thing, but we have a ways to go before, before we're done. 
We only have five minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and inspect uh, sort of that, that blue code. Uh, again, we've got a, you know, we, we've got kind of a, in fact, I can go ahead and uh, put this back down here. I just wanna kind of take a look at what's going on with those reflections to see if I can't figure out uh, what we're doing wrong there. Uh, otherwise, we'll make that the topic of tomorrow. So if we take a look here, if we, if we just don't uh, do the top map, right? The top map's gone, we just get the red. Uh, so the top map is the blue map, the sky map is the one that's wrong at the moment. And the question is, uh, why is it, you know, why is it sampling oddly like that, right? Um, and I guess I don't know, right? I guess I'm not sure uh, why that actually is the case. It's almost like it wants you know us to do that that bounce to it. It wants us to do some kind of negation, uh, and I'm I'm not sure why that would be. So this is the one we're passing through the bounce direction, right? Uh, and then we're going ahead and computing where we're hitting uh, on that map. Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to have to step through this. I think. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to save that for tomorrow because I'm going to want to step through this fairly meticulously because since we're also doing that uh, solve on the other side, uh, I feel like it's probably one of those things where, um, yeah, where, where, where it's going to. In fact, I wonder if in general the bounce is wrong and really, you know, what you'd want to do here is it's actually this negation or something like that where, um, it's, it's actually supposed to be negated the whole way. So I want to think through this a little bit more. I feel like we got, uh, I feel like it's just not rigorous, rigorous enough at the moment. And so I'm going to say tomorrow is going to be uh, stepping through this and making sure we think about exactly uh, how everything goes uh, before, we call that, uh, before we call that good. But we're very close, uh, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Q&A, right? Like so. Uh, and uh, yeah, please try to keep your questions uh, to be ones that, that uh, are about what we did on today's stream so that we can keep things on topic as much as possible. Uh, if you want to ask off topic questions, please come during one of the pre-streams. So show up maybe 15 minutes early tomorrow. Show up at 4.45 tomorrow and that's when I, I typically answer, answer um, uh, off topic questions. <clears throat> yeah. You could try creating a normal map with a more predictable reflection other than a sphere. Uh, is what, like what? I'm trying to think of what would have the most predictable reflection. I guess maybe a waffling surface, like a like something that was like up and then down and then up and then down or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure what is a very um, uh, what is a more predictable reflectable surface. Uh, spheres are usually pretty good for debugging lighting stuff because they show you the full uh, yeah the full set. Of course, I just realized why we get the attenuation here. That's because of the env map, probably uh, the env map blending coefficients, probably helping there. Maybe, although that's pointing up, so no, that shouldn't be true. I don't know. I got to think about it some more. It's it's awfully confusing. <clears throat> we got bugs. Let's put it that way. Tomorrow we'll find them. Is the y-axis correctly set in the normal map? Uh, well, it depends what you mean by correctly. So right now, we it's actually going sort of flipped, meaning the top of the sphere is actually the bottom, and the bottom is the top. And the reason for that is because we decided we probably were going to flip things uh, in the coordinate system soon, so we didn't want to change it. But So technically, this is actually backwards um, from what you would do if we were going to keep this coordinate system. Um, but that shouldn't really change 
how the sphere reflects other than in flipping it, right? I mean, it shouldn't, all it should do, like all that's doing is that's what, that's why the blue is on the bottom and the red's on the top is all I think that should be doing. Um, unless I'm mistaken. <clears throat> A pyramid was suggested by a couple of people. Yeah, we could build a pyramid. A pyramid wouldn't be too hard. Um, I could make a thing that's like make pyramid normal map, right? Make pyramid, pyramid, make Is that right? I don't know how to spell pyramid. Let's say that's right. So make pyramid normal map. Uh, that comes in and that'll just be, that's pretty straightforward, I guess, right? That's just gonna pick which of the, the things gets our 0 0.777, right? So uh, a pyramid, um, I guess we could do a diamond shape as well, but a pyramid shape would basically be if, if X is greater than Y, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Uh, so if I want to, if I want to figure out uh, a pyramid shape, let's see here. Should be pretty straightforward. So if I want to figure out a pyramid shape that looks like this, I guess, right? Um, then this is this line is x equals y, right? Um, and this line here. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, is is like one, I'm gonna say that they're between zero and one, but this is like uh, one minus X uh, equals Y, right? Uh, so I guess I could just do this by classifying which side of these you're on. Um, if you are like, if you're on, uh, right? If, if X is less than Y, uh, then you're either here or here, right? Uh, so if X is less than Y, then this, you know, we just use this to determine which one of these two you are. Yeah, okay, so that's that's pretty straightforward. I could totally do that. <clears throat> so all we would do here is we'd say, um, uh, if the x is less than the y, right, uh, then we are in those two quadrants, otherwise we're not. Uh, and then, then we would say over here, we'd, uh, we'd do if the, if the inverse uh, I'm trying to think is there's a better way to phrase that than the one minus X equals Y. Um, I don't think so. I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so we'll just say uh, the, uh, I'll call this uh, in the X. So we'll call this that, I guess. Minus one minus X. Uh, so if in the X is less than Y. Does that seem right to everyone? Um, all right. Uh, and so at the moment, like I said, our coordinate system is kind of backwards, um, but oh well, we'll still do it as if it wasn't. Um, <clears throat> so really, if we think about it, it's actually this way. That's the x equals y line. And this uh, is the invex equals y line, right? Uh, okay. And so if we are, if X is less than Y, then we're here or here, depending on whether inv X is less than Y. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so this guy would be uh, pointing in, I guess the, it would be, all of these guys have Z equals the point uh, seven, whatever, right? But this would be an X um, pointing in negative X. This would be pointing in y, this would be pointing in negative y, and this would be pointing in x, right? <clears throat> Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, so I'll go ahead and set that. Uh, so we don't actually need uh, nx or ny here. We don't need root term or any of these things. We just need uh, normal, like so. Uh, and we have our real seven, this value. There we go. 
And I guess we'll initialize that so the compiler doesn't complain, just in case the compiler were going to complain. <clears throat> and we'll clear that out. Uh, so if we're in x less than y, so we're on that side, uh, and then we're, oops, so we're x less than y, so we're on this side, uh, and then our inv x is also less than y, uh, then we are in here. So we would have uh, normal, and I guess we could also say that it's 0, 0, 7. We can just say that the normal dot x equals negative 7, right? Otherwise, uh, the normal dot y equals 7, because it's that upwards pointing one. Uh, here, <coughs> if we're on this side uh, of, the, of the x equals y line, uh, then if inv x is less than y, it's going to be the negative y, right? So it's uh, that one. Otherwise, it's the positive x. Does that seem right to people? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> but we'll have to call it make sphere normal map. We'll call make pyramid normal. So there's a pyramid. Um, I don't know if that tells us anything. It tells us that the two Y ones are totally not reflecting, but that may be just because uh, they're pointing uh, not towards anything. I don't know, I'll have to think about that. Garlando Bloom, so it would need to be flipped on both directions. Not sure what you're talking about, Garlando. I think the lower reflection also needs to flip the y there because it's the incoming vector. Uh, I don't think that's quite true. I mean, it may be true that we need to flip it, but uh, it's not true that it's the incoming vector because we already accounted for that when we did the computation, right? Um, we already did this, and that accounts for the fact that it's the incoming vector, right? Because this was solving negative e plus 2e transpose n n. Right, and so we already accounted for the negative e, or at least we tried to. <clears throat> you said you might have to make the sky texture larger than the ground so it wouldn't miss it. Could you instead sample from adjacent sky maps, assuming they're not occluded? Um, but there's no such thing as a adjacent sky map, because remember, this, this is something that we're producing in the game. So there is no adjacent sky map. So we want to just produce one lighting thing that covers as far as we want to sample, basically. Um, and so uh, that's the, because because remember, sometimes we, it's not necessarily the sky, it's like the roof if you're indoors or whatever. And so we need, we want it to kind of be dynamic. Uh, and that's that's really why we have to think about that. Grumpy Giant says, the edge attenuation is correct given that a reflected vector right on the edge will have a smaller y value than ones reflected from nearer the center. Is that true? I don't feel like that's true. Shouldn't they have a larger y value? I guess, well, no, you're right. Because as the plane goes there, I will, yeah, 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 that's true. That's a good point. So he, he totally brought up a good point for the attenuation. The edge attenuation is correct because it's not the normal that we're using. The normal is what we're reflecting off of. And so as it becomes more oblique to us, right? Um, like basically, you know, as we're talking about something that's pointing fairly, uh, fairly head on to something that's pointing less um, and less head on, right? Uh, once it's, it's going this way, if, you know, our i vector will not have much of a y component if the normal is pointing in y. So actually, the y component will be highest right in that sort of sweet spot um, where it's actually getting some y, but it's not having it, uh, uh, yeah, it's not having it kicked back. So we want the thing that, that transfers the maximum amount of y, and that's somewhere like, I don't know, 45 degrees or something. <clears throat>
Chrono Dragon. Would it be possible to rotate the incoming sampling from the environment map so that it looks like the sphere is spinning? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just adding an offset to the environment map, right? Um, <clears throat> you don't really have to rotate it, you could just move it. Um, but the problem is that's not a reflection anymore because a spinning reflective sphere just looks like a stationary reflective sphere, right? Um, so be careful what you're wish for there, right? Because it's not. <clears throat> Blue Revenge, oh, cylinders might be useful. You're correct. I think cylinders, sh cylinders should be better, yeah. Um, that's a very good point, actually. That's a very, very good point. Uh, and as for why we're getting this reflection, I don't know. This will be what we'll have to debug tomorrow. But uh, adding cylinders is a very good point. I feel like cylinders would be very instructive as well. Um, <clears throat> let me, uh, let's, uh, where is our, oops, make sphere, normal map. Um, I'm going to do make cylinder normal map. Make uh, cylinder, and we'll, we'll do this like make an X, make cylinder normal map. Uh, normal map X or something like that. Uh, and this would just be one where, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's never, it's it's always just the, uh, the X, right? Um, like so. And so, you know, the root term is always going to be greater than zero. And so you can always do this um, like this. Uh, in fact, what we could do, you know what we could do? Um, we could actually make sphere normal map, could actually make cylinders by passing in uh, like a CX and a CY, which basically multiply what the NX values are and the NY values are. Uh, so something like this. Does this make sense what I'm doing here? Where we can sort of turn off the X or the Y uh, to make a cylinder by not actually considering uh, those two. And so if we do it, you know, straight up, um, <clears throat> make pyramid normal map. Uh, so if we do it straight up and just do sphere normal map this way, right? Um, <clears throat> if I rerun the game, uh, that's our sphere, right? Uh, but if we then go in and say, oh, yeah, you know, don't, just make it be an X only or something, right? So that will knock out the Y component entirely. I think that would give us a cylinder. Or I could be very wrong about that. I feel like it should. Let me double check that that's just not whatever the bug is that we had that wasn't causing uh, sides to draw properly. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. So there's a, there's a cylinder, right? Um, the cylinder rolling this way. Uh, so yeah, so I think probably what that means is my pyramid generating code was wrong. I should probably draw it, but again, that's something we can do tomorrow. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know. That looks pretty good. That looks better than our sphere. We'll have to. Th we'll have to. Uh, again, we'll have to tackle this tomorrow. It's really uh, something we need to start stepping through and figure out what we're doing wrong. And Gasto5, uh, at the moment, we are uh, right-handed, but we're upper left corner um, in terms of our screen space, which we are having the to-do list to change. Uh, it's, it's kind of lingering, but we kind of wanted to finish doing our normal map stuff first, if that makes sense. Would inverted versions of normal maps be useful? I inverted sphere. Um, for debugging, possibly not, uh, but for gameplay, sure. Like when we actually have them. <laughs> Abner Combre, that's disturbing. The, what is disturbing about it? Uh, 
So, um, one thing I also don't think we're doing right now is actually, we're actually also not um, transforming the normals. So that's another thing we have to do tomorrow. Um, like, so for example, right, uh, if you look at this, let's see. This, is, this one's much easier, certainly, um, but it's something that we'll have to, to think about a little bit. So if you take a look at what happens in here, if I actually was to start uh, letting this thing rotate, right? Um, I said letting this thing, oh, right, angle is, yeah. Why is this not rotating? I thought I told you to rotate. But I don't know why you aren't rotating. Angle is going up as it should. Um, and screen center, if zero, per, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, so you can see that this is uh, not correct, right? Um, it, uh, it's not actually transforming those normals to point in different directions. It's leaving the normals pointing in the same direction they were pointing. Uh, and so then another thing that we will have to do uh, tomorrow is make sure that we actually uh, handle that properly, right? Um, so yeah, so I should put a note in there for while we're doing it tomorrow. So after normal to do KC, rotate normals based on y axis, like so. Uh, that is definitely something we will have to handle. Let's see, any other questions? Any other questions? Questions? Looks like there are no more questions. That's a wrap, says Abner Coimbre. That's a wrap. All right, well, if Abner says it's a wrap, it's a wrap, people. Uh, we are in good shape here. I think we probably, we're getting real close. I think we probably um, need about one more day probably to kind of go through here and, and uh, shore up all of our normal map stuff. And then we can move on to figuring out um, how we're going to, what we're going to do for this middle map, which is really the, that's the tricky guy. And so we'll have to see how that's going to go. And I have no idea. Uh, I really don't know. Hopefully we'll figure something clever out. Uh, but, you know, maybe we won't. Maybe we won't be as clever as we want to be. Either way, we will certainly give it a shot. I hope you will um, join me tomorrow as we finish up the normal map stuff, since that's something we at least know works well. <laughs> no mystery there, just us doing some debugging. Uh, so I hope you'll join me tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time again, right here on Twitch, uh, where we'll finish up our normal mapping code uh, so we can move on to trying to figure out what in the world we're going to do with that middle map. Uh, that ought to be interesting. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see. But thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you would like to follow along with the source code, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org. Um, you just use this little pre-order button and you will get a link where you can download the source code. Uh, if you would like to just support the video series, you can always subscribe to our Patreon page. It's very much appreciated. We also have a forums where you can ask questions and you can look at uh, community ports to Linux and Mac. And you can also use the annotated episode guide to catch up with past episodes if you've missed episodes or if you're just starting out. It's a great place to go. And finally, we have a tweet bot that will tweet the schedule at you if you're trying to catch the live stream and want to know when it's going to be. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Uh, again, I hope to see everyone back here at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, I think we should be able to wrap up normal mapping, which will feel good. Uh, and then we can go ahead and, and start working on that lighting puzzle, which is going to be, which is going to take some ingenuity. It's going to take some ingenuity. So hopefully we'll figure something good out. All right. Thanks for joining me and uh, have a wonderful Wednesday tomorrow.
Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys on the internets.